I'm Buzz, and you're watching The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with Buzz. How are you? I'm so good. I have to get a, a different cup for my coffee. That's how we're doing right now. Oh my god! Like this is this is not this is not giving me any kind of vibe. What is your like favorite coffee order? I'm an iced americana every day, but on weekends when I'm like, oh, sugar is my friend today, I'll do a espresso tonic. Mm -hmm. There's a couple places around here that do it with like orange bitters, and that is everything. Oh my god, amazing. I absolutely love coffee. I haven't had one today, but I probably will after. So yeah, I wanted to start off this interview with like, what is your fondest musical memory? Oh my gosh, just one? <laughs> um, wow. I think it, it might be like seeing some orchestras growing up. I was in orchestra um, as a kid and we would go downtown Houston I grew up I grew up in Houston um, we'd go downtown to the to the orchestra and some of those shows really just felt like the um, the melodies felt like the way I feel it was like so deep and rich and I think that really sticks out to me, that in like choral music performances. What instruments did you play in the or orchestra? I only played violin. Oh, wow. Uh, my, my grandmother played violin, not professionally, but just for fun. My grandma played a lot of things. And so when we would go to her house, she would like play the violin and she's hopping on the organ and then she's playing the piano and it was so crazy. But she was like, well, I have extra violins. like, And they were really bad. They were really bad violins. She didn't know you know, and I didn't know. And then I had the squeakiest, worst violin in the whole orchestra all those years. So I feel like I had to learn to play even better to overcome nails on a chalkboard violin, like $50 at a flea market that my grandma had acquired. <laughs> oh my God, that's incredible. Uh, have you played then, violin since? I stopped mid high school. Okay. And I recently was back home and I like whipped it out and I was really surprised it wasn't terrible. It was not terrible, but by no means is it beautiful now. But I, my first instrument was piano. When I was five, I started playing and then my parents were like, okay, like, I guess this is going to be like something that we let you do lessons for. So I never stopped piano. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also wrote your song at a, like your ever first song at a very young age. Do you remember yeah. what? Long sounded like or what that song I, like? I can never forget it it's so depressing um <laughs> well, my very first song was called alone oh wow and this shows you how like so I was seven I'm confused my mom is always like no you were five but I'm like I just can't even fathom it I started lessons and my teacher at the time was like hey if you want to like because I was like, check out this thing I just made up. They were like, okay, how about each week, like you learn the piece I give you, but then also make your own piece and show it to me. So it became like a, like the fun part of lessons was yeah. like, oh, I'm allowed to like be a composer. So like after creating a bunch of those, eventually I was like, oh, like what if I make a minor version of chopsticks that annoying, like ding, 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 with your like knuckles and everything. I was like, what if this is an A minor? Because I had just learned what minor chords were minor like the relative minor of major and I was like oh my gosh this like feels so much like my brooding soul I was just like what does this song sound like in a minor and then I slowed it way down so if it were sped up it would literally just sound like chopsticks in a minor key but it <laughs> I remember all of it it's literally like I'm alone out in the open can't you see I'm just awaiting for the day you will come it goes on like that the chorus lifts into a major part it's like where'd you go when all of a sudden i needed you and there's this line about a flashlight it's like can't you see me waving my flashlight in the air like didn't fit but i was like i have to say flashlight 
don't understand. I'm like, was I talking to aliens? This is a very strange thing to be saying at seven. I'm like, come ad- abduct me. I'm ready. Like, you? <laughs> like, I was also go- my parents were going through a divorce. Okay, okay. So I think it might have been that. Okay. Well, I love how you remember every single lyric still to this day. Literally, because. Thank God, like, there's documented evidence of this stuff. Like, you know, my dad on camcorder being like, mm, that's my shit. So, yeah, I just remember that one. I mean, Great. fast forward to today, um, you're about to release your debut EP. It's fantastic. How are you feeling right now? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Like, what are your feelings? I'm so both. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the first body of work that I put out under this project I don't know I mean it just it's from such a real place every moment of creating it was so deeply like tuned in internally and each song helped me understand a deeper part of myself maybe I was hiding from or like something that really just like it was people always say like music is therapy but this is like these creating these songs like really balances me and so it is very special and personal the nervousness comes from like I just would love for there to be anyone out there that when they hear this they feel that same like relief that I did Mm -hmm. so it's a little nerve-wracking just you never know what's gonna happen I mean let me tell you uh at first listening uh like the album literally gave me chills so (sighs) thank you wow yay (laughs) no problem um what was the process to create this album how long did it take were there any like hard parts in creating it it took um it kind of took half a year I the oldest song on the EP is reality that was written last June and then everything else was written October through February actually October through January statues was the last one written in January I don't think there was any hard part which is really awesome um and like crazy for my brain to allow that kind of you know extended relaxation (laughs) but um I thought the EP was done around October. At that point, I'd written Reality and Subconscious, which are on there, and I had like four others. And and I thought, this is the EP. And go to the mountains alone and bring my whole setup and just like be really tapped out of the internet and just do a couple crazy things just to see if like maybe an interlude comes from it maybe an intro like maybe the next ep who knows like i really didn't think you know anything about like this is you know let's go find the the focus tracks or whatever but when i went that was in december and i think because i allowed myself to feel so like excited about we're just going to be alone we don't know what's going to happen this is just me and my songwriting our little time yeah. that i knew pretty early on like day 2 that i was creating like stuff that was really really blowing me away so that's when I, that's when universe was written that's when different sun was written yeah the intro running was written there too and then because of how amazing that all felt i came back and went on break for the holiday mm-hmm. and january was watching um a dance piece and it was like 7 p.m. i was like i'm not going to i'm done for the day saw a dance on YouTube and was like, have to go to the studio. Statues was written. Piers was written in January, I believe, because my neighbors were hammering mm-hmm. and I heard it in the bathroom and it just sounded so cool because it sounded like you're like knocking on cardboard. It was so hollow and like, and yeah. then they were, then they were sawing, which like, I'm don't know how I rent, not sure how they're getting away with this, but there was sawing and it was the coolest, like, 
this hollow i knew it was going to be the kick i was like that's going to be the kick and then this the saw was like and so then i started reversing it and like putting it through a sampler and all these things and so that was tears and tears was like this is done this is we've got it so yeah i mean i've i've had a whole career where it's always you know when i'm writing with other artists it was everybody you know waiting to see what do people think what's the a and r think do they think it's good enough all these things let's find out if the president likes it and all you know and then it was with this project it is so like i know when it's done which again is probably why it's very nerve-wracking to be like okay i'm my own yes man over here when do you know a song is done like do you just have a gut feeling or do you have to get yourself to stop somehow no it's so interesting that i don't I'm, I feel so lucky that I don't have that problem that a lot of my producer friends have where they're like, I could just keep going and going and going. From the start, I know what I want it to feel like. Awesome. And I know when it's not feeling like that yet. And then I know when it is. So okay. it's it's really emotionally driven, which helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I love all the field recordings in this project. Do you try to find these sounds or do they just come to you and you record them no yeah I mean I do not seek it out it's very spur of the moment Mm -hmm. um you know like if I'm sometimes I need to just like drive and get lost yeah I'll drive like all the way to Malibu and I'll take really strange ways to get there all through the hills and it just really calms me down and I'll like stop at some of the places where there's like a, a lookout. And if there's just, you know, crickets or like a, a wash of air, that's really loud. If I'm in the right state of mind, then I'll know, like I got to grab that. Mm-hmm. So it's always in my like really calm states where I'm able to like, Oh yeah, nature's beautiful. Like let's grab this. Um, so I don't I don't know if it would be the same if I was always thinking like where should I go and grab something and it might evolve into that but to you know this was the first time that I did that and the icicles dripping off the branches um I mean it was just impossible to ignore in the cabin the windows were so thin yeah. and I'm just hearing like this perfect like and I'm like well that's the that's a that's a fill <laughs> like, that's a fill you don't have to build but nature and gravity is building and I think there's so something really powerful about involving like the spontaneity of nature in the record but yeah I don't I don't seek it out I had a class uh for digital media and like he made us make a soundscape uh and that was like my first time experimenting with field recordings and I had so much trouble with it, I think because it was my first time, but like just listening to your music and being like, wow, like there's field recording is recordings in there. It's incredible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think there's something beautiful about being in a place where you, you're there just to enjoy nature. And then the idea was like, Ooh, this is cool. Instead of I'm going here for that thing, I, you know? Yeah. I went to the Redwoods and there was like this creek running through it. And I think we spent like three minutes, Lance and I both grabbing it because we'd been listening to so many like um, river sounding things to fall asleep. So oh. it kind of started and that was like a year ago. It started with like, oh, let's record things because this is reminding me of what I like when I'm sleeping. And <laughs> now it's like, please don't fall asleep. <laughs> Oh my god no that's incredible um I mean it's called on matters of searching so where did this title come from and what are you searching for yeah um <laughs> so I was listening to this astrophysics audiobook on one of my drives through the hills and they were talking about this ancient physicist from like 400 bc and the only thing they'd kept from his, the the only thing that survived was the table of contents and then a couple diagrams of what this guy was theorizing to be the atom with like no telescope or anything to verify and it was accurate and so for like physicists they just consider like that's the true father but his works have been lost yeah and his table of contents 
was preserved so you can see you know his writing and everything and everything in this one body of work was like on matters of gravity on matters of spheres on matters of constellations on matters and I just loved that way of speaking and it just really stuck with me and I was like I want to name like a series of projects that and so that's when I was like let me do an EP because I think at the time I was like am I going to do an album what am I going to do what's the first thing I'm tired of just like single and wait single and wait yeah and that was when it was like okay well I can do chapters almost so there's on matters of searching and then there will be on matters of and I don't know what that's going to be just yet but those will be the first two EPs so on matters of searching felt extremely right in my body and the longer it was there the more you know I'm still like that is absolutely what I want to name it and I think it's because so much of my inspiration cycle life cycle is this push and pull of I love myself and then this almost um almost like a hatred mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it comes from okay I love myself everything's at peace everything is good you know I can be like a tree I don't have to apply a story to everything and then like the whiplash of like fear what will other people think what do people think of me but it's always soothed with nature and when I'm just having these like if I read you know the science books it like soothes me to read these crazy astrophysics concepts and it just all feels like okay what's going through everyone else's mind doesn't matter and like you know my song liberation is this like ever soothing song to myself like I am doing this for me I'm a creative person for me I don't know if I'll ever fully like know that to be a hundred percent true it's something that I'm always coming back to so on matters of searching is never ending never ending searching for peace searching for and I don't even think I'm searching for answers I I really love those like big unknowns that gives me a lot of peace too to just be like I don't know where I go after this I don't know where I was before it somehow feels very relaxing because it's kind of a surrender to the things that we cannot control. I think there's peace in that. And I think that's why it's so hard to be in the moment because in the moment you cannot control. Mm -hmm. Constantly in the moment, I'm trying to think what's gonna happen next. Cause that's, I wanna control. And I know what happened last time. So it's gonna happen on matters of searching. It's the search for, for all of it. It's never ending. No, I love it. And this EP is incredible. Um, my last question for you is who are your favorite artists right now? Well, Caroline Polachek is just continuously delighting me. Yeah. Um, what a wonderful, I'm so excited that her project exists. There's this other artist, Hyde, that I'm very inspired by and they actually work together. Um, and I've worked with Hyde recently, okay. but I'm like such a fan. And then, I mean, my, my biggest things that, that I'm always going back to are scores like the score for Annihilation um the score for Ex Machina the score for um Arrival with the just will never get over that they decided I forget that guy's name but he I'm like what an amazing mind to decide to get that brief of like okay so this scene we're gonna have this really crazy looking spacecraft it's the first time you're going to see the spacecraft and they decide i'm going to have zero verb female vocal just going with like glitch tape type i'm like that's the stuff that really really inspires me yeah so yeah amazing well it was so great chatting with you and again the cp is chef's kiss Thank you.